When is the unusual case as a mom drags her daughter to court to prove that her daughter's boyfriend is not the father of her grandchild? Now her daughter on the other hand claims that her boyfriend's the father of her baby. Now what's that result gonna be? Mr. Boyce, you are not the father. A woman takes her son's teenage baby mom to court to prove that her son didn't father her kid. Now, the woman claims that her son's not the other man that she's been with and she sleeps around with a bunch of other dudes. Now, the teenage mom, on the other hand, admitted to sleeping with other men during the window of conception, but still claims that she knows the father of her baby. Well, let's see how that goes down. Ms. Jackson, you are petitioning the court to determine the paternity of your alleged granddaughter. Oh, to think he fathered Miss Pickens' one-year-old daughter. Now, you say she's a liar and had sex with multiple men at the time of conception. Now, Ms. Pickens, you admit to sleeping with at least two other men while involved with Ms. Jackson's son, but now has turned on you both. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Pickens claims that Ms. Jackson accepted the child, and suddenly she started doubting the paternity of the baby. Now, Ms. Jackson, however, denied accepting the child in the first place. I do not believe this is my granddaughter. Um, she first, if I can bring you into my reality. With I want to go in. Tell me what happened. Okay. She came to my home with her mother and another family member. Let me remind you, this child was already four months old. And this is getting pretty interesting. So, Ms. Pickens in a relationship with somebody else while she was messing around with Ms. Jackson's son. Starting to make sense. I did believe that it was one of the guys that I was dating. Two. She don't know. Two. She don't know. Two. She when don't I know. met him, I had a boyfriend. Exactly. Me and a boy you know, stopped. So, she also said she's a cheater. Hold on, hold on. Me now, Ms. Jackson, boy... let her speak. I'm sorry. You, when you met her son, yes. you had a boyfriend. Yes. Like, we wasn't in a relationship. We were just exactly. messing around. Okay. Me and her son was messing around. Every, we day, had unprote every day, every day, unprotected sex every day. And so yes. now listen. Now, it was pretty obvious that Miss Pickens is still pretty young and doesn't know how pregnancy works. I mean, she even thought the last person she slept with was gonna be the baby daddy. And you thought he was the father yes, at sir. first. Yes, sir. The guy that was after Miss Jackson's son. Yes. Did you get a DNA test with him? No, ma'am. So... I know, with the pregnancy, yes, I did thought the other guy was her daddy because I'm like, well, well, you the last person I slept with, so of course I'm gonna think that he was her father. When did you change your mind and decide, no, no, not that guy? Now, Ms. Jackson claims that the kid doesn't look anything like her son, while Ms. Pickin claims otherwise, and Ms. Jackson's son doesn't deny it. Now, Ms. Jackson also claims that she doesn't feel any grandmother connection to the kid. So he ain't never denied it. If he did, he denied her around them. Your Honor, I will agree. So you think they look alike? Yes, they do. Your Honor. They look just alike. No. Can y'all, can you stand no. up and turn to the court? No. That look hey, more like her, her son hey. than mine. No. no. Let's be real. So, Ms. Jackson, even looking at this shot, you still don't see the resemblance. I see that, okay? Yes, I will agree with that. You would have never took the time and be like, well, she could come over to my house. Well, you could come over to my house and spend... You could come over with your daughter and spend the night. I'm just saying, what, that's the simple what, fact because, what wrong woman because I'm my son... Saying? This is starting to get pretty messy, man. Now, apparently, Miss Biggins lied about a second pregnancy. And this is really making the judge question everything that she's been saying. Was she telling the truth, or is she just lying? She acts like she was in the hospital when she really wasn't, Your Honor, and she That's gave me a bogus number stating... You're saying she lied about a second pregnancy? Yes, yes. when she found out Aaliyah was pregnant. She is very jealous of Aaliyah. She's in competition yeah. with Aaliyah. Yeah. She told me when she found that out... Yes, lie about yes, a second pregnancy? Yes, I was kind of hurt. I was kind of hurt. Yes, I did lie. And the only reason how you know I lied because I told your son no, that no. I lied. I, yes, we you found did. out because no, we called no, the hospital. No, 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 no. And there was no, no such record. Why yes, did you yes, lie? Yes, Ms. Jackson says that she believes in her heart that her son's not the father. However, if the result states otherwise, she's going to step up as a grandmother of the baby and take care of her. Now, Ms. Pickens also says that she just wants to know who the father of her baby is. Period. I, know that's right. who I, I really don't. Too. That's my hope. Let them go on about their business. Start taking care of my, ch my grandchild. But I don't think it is. Great. And I want you to know I will hold you to that. Oh, you don't have to. Good. My grandkids that I have, they would tell you that. And no, here's one of the good. mothers. I take yeah. good Ms. Pickens, care of my Pickens, what are you hoping for? That's it's right. just about Shazaya. That's right. I, and I just want her to do, just call about Shazaya, see if she okay, and at least spend time with I her. I will. Some, when I do, if I do come back to North Carolina, that's all I want. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of curious about whether Miss Jackson's son is the baby daddy or not. We got to just get her out of the way, man. So it's time to check out those results, and we can feel the tension in that courtroom. Mrs. Jackson, 
You are not <laughs> her grandmother. Got you. <laughs> yes! Hold on. Yes! Well, the result is in, and that just kind of sucks. I feel bad for Miss Pickens, because she's got to continue her quest to finding out who that baby daddy is. Now, a mom takes her daughter to the paternity court, saying that her daughter is an out-of-control teenager. She's also got doubts that her daughter's boyfriend is the father of her grandbaby. Now, the daughter, on the other hand, disputes her mom's claim, saying that her boyfriend is the father of her baby. So let's dive right on in and see what happens. Today, we have the case of Covey, Co mother versus daughter. Uh, Miss Co, you say you are here today because your daughter is an out of control teenager and she needs help. Furthermore, you claim that uh, you have serious doubts uh, that your daughter's boyfriend, Mr. Boyce, is the father of your seven month old grandson. You say Mr. Boyce has been a good father to the baby, but that your daughter has numerous sexual partner and so he needs to know the truth yes ma'am you have also petitioned the court to demand that your daughter attend parenting classes miss jeanette Cole claims that her daughter's out of control and that she's got an issue with authority she says that all she wanted from her daughter was for her to obey house rules which she constantly disobeyed she also claims that her daughter called people over to destroy her house and her car um, she has an issue with authority. She doesn't want to be told what to do, how to do, or why to do it. Give me specific instances. Okay. I get the phone call to go up to the school. I get there. I was thankful that I knew this police officer. He looks at me and he says, this is your daughter? He says, I could take her to jail right now. She could have a felony. Wow. The officer got in the way. In your petition to the court, you stated something about uh, damage to your home. Because she still did not want to follow house rules. All I asked her to do was not disrespect the house. Don't bring the drama to the house. I feel we like had... that's not the truth. That's not the truth. Now, Ms. Yarkoe, on the other hand, claimed that her mom's girlfriend jumped her while she was pregnant. Apparently, she's resentful because she thought her mom abandoned her when she was a kid, and so she spent most of her life with her dad. But is that enough reason to destroy your mom's house? Jumped on me and I was pregnant. So, so they she didn't window jump window on you. The they didn't jump. They broke out window, car. They hit me with a brick. I got hit in the back of the head. What? And I you... also stopped them. Excessive. Right. And right Over now, the top. She's really and dangerous. dangerous. I want to know how did you get here? Well, most children grow with their mother, not their father. I grew up with my father because due to the fact she abandoned me when I was in my teenage. You didn't have so much as a visitation? Oh, yeah. I had visitation rights. She came over on weekends. I never and missed so a beat. And so did you ever have a positive relationship? No, not really. Now, Miss Jeanette's concerned about the paternity of her grandbaby because she knew her daughter was sleeping with more than one dude. She also says that she loves her daughter even after all the things that her daughter did there was somebody else in the picture. So, Mom, you're saying she was sleeping with multiple guys? I know that there was someone else. Now, how many more it was, I'm not for sure. But I do know that there was someone else. So, when I find out she's pregnant, I go to the guy. I go to Larry. I say to Larry, look, as Zaire's mother, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I've got to be 100. I say you need to get a DNA test. But as the girl, me, I was being real, and I said, I'm not gonna lie, but there is a possibility. An emotional moment here as Ms. Zyar expresses how she doesn't want her son to grow up without both of his parents like she did. You're worried now about this cycle repeating itself. Exactly. And I know you still love and are concerned for your daughter. You've made that clear today. Really? Because even after she had done all of that to me, I move out to Arizona. She calls me two months later after I'm in Arizona. She says, Mom, I need you. I don't have anybody. Uh, you know, she's about to have my grandson. What do we do? Now, her boyfriend, Mr. Boyce, is called upon as a witness, and he says that he knows there's a possibility the kid isn't his, but he's still hoping that the kid is. We also know uh, that this child is very important to you. Yeah, he really is. Am I correct? Yes. Please tell the court about that. Uh, I feel like uh, from the beginning, I knew it was a possibility, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying, he... He made, he made me grow more, you know what I'm saying, since he's been around. Because my mom, she she passed away. Once I told her about it, you know what I'm saying, she just, oh, that's my grandbaby. She she buying him everything. I'm like, So oh, your mom? Passed away in February. You know, it's nice that he's got love for that kid, even though it's still not certain if he's the dad or not. Fashions and people, and that you can be the father figure that that child needs, regardless of that. I want to commend you for that. Right.
yeah. and he's making you a better man. Yeah, he made me he made me feel like I got more to live for. After I lost my mom and my brother, I felt like I had nothing. That's my man. You looking at pictures of you as a child and him as a child. That's I can see son. in your eyes you love him. I don't know about you, but I want to find out what's what, so let's check out that result. It could possibly be Mr. Boyce or maybe someone else. Okay. Let's go to the results, okay? Jerome, do you have the results? Here you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we ready? No. I'm ready. Well, that didn't go as anybody wanted it to. I mean, it's nice that Mr. Boyce was really going to step up as the dad, but not his baby, not his problem. Mr. Boyce, you are not the father. A teenage mom takes her first love to court, asking him to step up and be a father to her baby. However, the young man refuses to do anything for her son until the DNA result test proved that the kid's his. Now, he claims that he wasn't the only one that she was sleeping with during her window of conception. Miss Short, you and your mother opened your case today because your first love, the defendant, denies he fathered your 21-month-old son, Jabari. You are a single teenage mother who needs help, and you demand Mr. Johnson step up and be a father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Short claims that Mr. Johnson is the father of her kid, and the kid needs a father figure in his life. Now, she admitted to sleeping with another person, so there's a possibility that Mr. Johnson ain't the baby daddy. We got to do this for Jabari. Stop. She just need to know, is he the father? So he can step up and do the right thing, hopefully. You know, we can't make him, but we need to know, because I did... I did stop him from coming over because I didn't want no feelings to get involved. Like, did him to get attached if he wasn't the father? Because she did tell them, it's a possibility you may not be the father. Mr. Johnson claims that he tried to get involved in the kid's life, even when he knew there was a possibility the kid wasn't his. But Ms. Short's mom stopped him from coming to the house. She says that she didn't want any bond or disappointment if it's found out that the kid isn't Mr. Johnson. Her own mother was not in the hotel, in the hospital room with her when I she sure had her baby. I sure wasn't, because I, I wasn't happy about the situation. Well, it don't matter. You should... Let I hope young he's man... not today. Let too. this young man talk. Well, Go yeah. ahead, Mr. Johnson. But when I found out about the baby and I talked to Miss Short on the phone, I told her, if it, if it was mine, I was going to be there for her. I was going to help her with the baby. She was like, because I was like, it was a possibility. So I was like, I'm scared to let the moms know. She was like, you need to let them know so it won't be in any confusions when the baby get here. After that, I called her and I said, it's a possibility that Mr. Johnson can be the father of my son. She said, if you need any help with anything, please let me know. I didn't expect that because I said possibility already. Now, Mr. Johnson says that he had no doubts as to whether the kid was his until he heard that there was another potential father. Now, he said that if the kid really is his, he'll step up and be a father to the kid. So, this is a communication between you and Mr. Johnson. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. And this is something he wrote to you? Yes, Your Honor. He writes, I'll be there for you and my child. I love all mine. That one thing you ain't got to worry about, I'm going to be a great father to my children. So, he wrote that letter and promised you in that moment that he was going to be a good father to his child and believed, it seemed, that it was his child. Do you remember writing that, Mr. Johnson? I remember I remember writing that louder, but at the time, I thought that, that Jabari was mine. Me, growing up 20 years, I never had a father. If he's mine, I'm going to be the blank end of that discussion. Oh, hold up. What, he's got four other kids and he's only 20 years old? Might be time for somebody to go to the vet and get clipped. So you got four other children. Yes, ma'am. And Jabari would make five? Yes, ma'am. Can I and you're 20 now? years old? All these uh -uh. are not kids, you want them. They're not his. They're not his. I wish they can do blood tests, too, but they don't want to. You're saying that some of the other ones you yes, feel like are not his. Yes, ma'am. But the fact that he is in the running for the position as yeah. father, and I don't mean it. It's not a joke. I mean it. The fact that you are in the running to be father means that you admittedly slept with these women without protection, because if you use protection, you would know that's not me. It's honestly a lesson learned for Miss Short. Bringing a kid into the world at such a young age is no easy feat. You don't just change your own life, you change the life of your family, your family's life, the child's life. Everybody has to chip in, everybody has to be responsible. Mother's just here, Mr. Johnson saying, she doesn't even know for certain if the other children are truly her grandchildren. She doesn't know for certain. At this point in time, let's just hear the results, because I'm dying to know whether Miss Johnson is that baby daddy. 
because you're better than that. Yeah. But we here now, and Jabari is here. Now, I want to get these results. Jerome, give me the envelope. I was kind of hoping the results came out a little bit differently because Miss Short deserves better. But Mr. Johnson promised to be a father to their baby, so question mark, who knows? It has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. Like, like I said, I beat up on Good. A 19-year-old girl takes a man to court claiming that he's the father of her baby. Now, the man, on the other hand, claims that he didn't father her kid and that she may have been pregnant before he even slept with her. Crazy, right? Well, let's see how that goes down. Ms. Taylor, you say Mr. Brown is an older man who swept you off your feet and got you pregnant. You're here today to prove to Mr. Brown that he is the father of your three-month-old daughter, Melanie Brown. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Taylor, you're also suing Mr. Brown for $2,256 in child care expenses for the past three months of your child's life. Yes, Your Honor. This really started to be interesting. Now, Mr. Brown had doubts about the kid's paternity, so he got cheap diapers for the baby. I mean, he could have at least gotten nothing, I guess. So you bought some cheap diapers because you didn't think it was your baby? Yes, I mean, it was better than nothing, I thought, probably. Because I didn't really know whether it was my baby or not, so I can't take care of somebody else's baby. So did you have sex with Miss Taylor? Yes. Did you use protection? Um, uh, not all the time. Well, then, there's a possibility it could be your baby. Yeah. All right, so that should have been a note to self, Mr. Brown. I always say, beware the old man in the club. Hey. <laughs> um... <laughs> continue, Miss Taylor. So, I go back to his place, and we got into it. Like, we had well, sex she, or whatever. She kept, she kept asking me about, it, like, hey, do you like babies? Or... No, I was not, Your Honor. Uh, we uh, didn't I'm even like, talk. I'm like, babies. This is my first time meeting her. She's talking about, oh, do you like babies? Or how do you feel about babies? I'm thinking that she was already pregnant. He was trying to find her baby daddy for her. Now, he obviously doesn't want to be a father. Truthfully, this dude's funny, but we got to find out if he's the father of the baby or not. The third time the condom broke. The condom broke. Yeah. So, in fact, you and could she, potentially be and then she kept Melanie's saying, father. Keep going, keep going. I was like, no, no. And then... <laughs> and I told her I'd be back, and I left. It was never no condom in the first place. Okay, so... When you find out you're pregnant, are you still in a sexual relationship? Like and I took weeks another after one. We had sex Can I finish? Pregnant. Can I finish? And, I, and I'm like pregnant. Can I, can I pregnant? I said pregnant four times. Like how? Your Honor, <laughs> you said pregnant four times. Right. So I'm like, how? You so pregnant? and every time she said yes, she's still pregnant. Right. Yeah. Obviously, she was. <laughs> All right. So hold up. The dude's a dad of five other kids. I mean, I'm just kind of feeling like this dude's a little bit too immature to have so many babies. I mean, he is saying he doesn't feel a bond with a kid, though, so he doesn't think it's his. I'm trying so hard to be patient, Mr. Brown. You more immature than a red up. an 18-year-old that she could have dated. How do you say you looking at a beautiful newborn baby like, I gotta go? <laughs> and then you go outside, you tell her, I'm going out to smoke, and you never come back. Because my other baby, as soon as I held the baby, I felt a bond. So you are a father? Yes. How many other children do you have? Five. Mr. Brown's name's on the birth certificate of the baby, and that makes him legally responsible for the kid. I don't think he wants to accept that. Did you put him on the birth certificate? Yes. You put his name down? Yeah. You have a copy of that birth certificate? I never put my name on there. I didn't know my name was even on there. So this is a copy of... Melanie's birth certificate. Yeah. Mr. Brown, you see your name there, right? I, I didn't know it was there. You never seen this birth certificate? Mm -mm. The results are in, so let's check out who that baby daddy is. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Brown, you are the father. I told you. You know, I personally think that that kid deserves better, but Mr. Brown's promised to step up and be a father to the kid. Hopefully, he does a good job. Good day, everyone. Ms. Brown, you stand before the court with your mother, Alicia Brown. You say your world was recently turned upside down when you were contacted by a man never even heard of before, claiming to be your birth father. Explore the weirdest paternity cases on paternity court and this captivating dive into family mysteries. 
where a man is claiming to be the father of a woman and has also been paying child support. Now the twist, she grew up in foster care and has never even met him. Now these are the strangest cases on paternity court. The case opens with Ms. Brown and her foster mother seeking answers concerning who her biological father was. Now she got contacted by a man who she said hasn't met her and who claiming to be her father. Now Mr. Hampton's pretty certain that he's her biological dad. With your mother, Alicia Brown, you say your world was recently turned upside down when you were contacted by a man whom you've never even heard of before claiming to be your birth father. Now that man, Mr. Hampton, is waiting uh, in our courtroom hallway and he will join us in a moment. Now he claims he has evidence to prove he is in fact your biological father. She was adopted when she was three and nobody's claimed to be her biological father. Now he shows up out of nowhere claiming that he'd been involved with her mom and the last time he'd seen her was when she was two weeks old. But why show up now? Uh, uh, I cried every minute on the plane. Do you have any proof of this? Thank you. So this is a picture of the person you say is Miss Brown's birth mother. Yes, yes, Your Honor. And she's pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I've kept this photo for years, Your Honor, because I, I knew someday that I would I would find her, Your Honor. It, it's just, there's nothing that distinguishly says it's me. Maybe if I had that wrap that was around that baby. Now he puts up evidence claiming his dance and brings up a picture he had of her given to him by her biological mother. But her foster mom claims that she also has that picture too. Pretty strange indeed. Two years old. How did you get that picture? Your Honor, when I went back to Alaska, Your Honor, I came across her mother, Your Honor, and uh... So you went back to Washington, then you came back to Alaska, and her birth mother gave you this picture. Yes, Your Honor, and I, I still have that, that, I've kept that photo on my wall for the last 20 years, Your Honor. So this is a picture of, wow, so this picture of the young baby girl that you say is your daughter, Kayla, has been up on the wall in your home. Exactly, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Brown says that she's also been taking tests to see possible men who could be potential fathers, but Mr. Hampton has never for once been listed out. At least for sure three times, if not four times, in for blood tests. Okay. And watch them draw blood from her to try to determine who her father was. And they never could determine who the father was. So they kept th listing different men. Okay, now, they, now we think this. I understand your emotion. The thought of being a mother and bringing your baby in to have blood drawn. I normally wouldn't take an infant in because I knew I'd be attached to them. Mm -hmm. Don't take her. Don't take her from us. Now he claims that he's also been paying child support, but they said nobody has contacted them concerning the child support. Now could her foster mom know something, or is she just scared to let go of Ms. Brown? You were paying child support. That's, that's what they Don't they have to here. determine paternity to be able to make you pay child support? Then, nope. Yeah, you do have to have. And that the order names you as the father. Of, uh, is my name on there? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There, There is no other man, Your Honor. We were together every day. I've celebrated her birthday every single year, Your Honor. I've always put her, her, her name on, on the cakes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Brown questions where he had been all these years. Now, what would Mr. Thompson's fate be? Now, his efforts over the years in finding out the paternity of Ms. Brown could go down the two. Now, let's see the truth of the situation. Mr. Hampton, you have desperately waited for this answer. You are not her father. <laughs> Ms. Brown's petition in the courts to proved to Mr. Rutledge that he is indeed the biological father of her baby. But he holds that he ain't because of the promiscuous nature of Ms. Brown matters to you today is the future of your one-year-old daughter, Sanaya. Yes, Your Honor. You state you're here to prove the defendant, Mr. Rutledge, yet he's seen her only once in her life. So, Ms. Brown, why are you so sure Mr. Rutledge is your daughter's father? Yes, Your Honor. Um, me and Mr. Rutledge, you know, we had sexual relations and things like that. Fifth, which was Memorial's Day, which I was over there um, at his mother's house. Now, she claims that she ain't never been involved with other men during the window of conception. But her sexual intimacy with Mr. Rutledge's cousins and brother only makes the situation worse and it's created reasons for doubt. After they broke up, they split up, whatever. She got with my other cousin. Had a one had a one night had a one night stand with him. The powder from him got with my brother. 
Oh, I need you to give me money for a morning after pill. Ms. Brown, you left these facts out. Yes, yeah. I left them out, Your Honor, because they're not facts. He knew how I was. He knew everything before, you know, any before we started even messing with each other because we had mutual friends. We were around each other. He had a chance to get to know me and everything. And as you can see, he still decided to have contact with me. So obviously, I couldn't have been that much of a bad person that he's dating right now. Now, both parties is all pissed off as the situation gets even messier, and it shows how unhealthy it could be for the baby. Now, why bring an innocent kid into the world when the so-called relationship is toxic AF? Your Honor, can let's I be respectful, Mr. Rutledge. Okay, I'm, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor, can I just say this? Yeah. Um, he said that that's all I'm good for, but I must have been good for a lot because he used to write his nine-year-old's daughter peaking great. Yes, um, back when I was, like, you know, younger, I did, you know, used to be wild. I mean, like, partying, drinking, hanging out, stuff like that. And, you know, I've been through a lot of my life, and I didn't... I, it was to the point where I wasn't really... She said, I don't care, man. I'm coming there. I, I took a picture of the door. Yes, ma'am. And something to my... No. Phone. Your Honor, for the Your Honor, there Your Honor, with actually, the baby yes. Too. He telling me, oh, she don't look nothing like me. That's not my daughter. And yes, I was enraged. I was very upset. If, you, if somebody tell you they hope your child die and stuff, you're going to lose all respect. That, that contains statements like, I hope your baby dies and I'm going to run some kids over with a car. <laughs> Prior to appearing in the courtroom, efforts was been made by our aunt to prove attorney through DNA, but both parties didn't show up. Now, going back and forth with the issue only proves that somebody's hiding something. If you know it's a possibility that this is your baby, then why not? And yes, when my niece was running the streets and partying she and doing what is. she did, she did abandon her kids. She's up. pregnant now. And she, she left her kids. That's kid. not none of your business she to have a baby so you can stop worrying about she's mine. She's pregnant now. And but she's, she's not she wild. So what? But why Let's get worried? some order. I, I Continue, Miss Brown. I did cause the Child Protective Services on my niece, and it was because she had left her children at, at my mom's house with me and my mother. And, but it was not a removal situation. It was a situation for her to woman up. Like, these are your children, and you need to take responsibility for your children. And at the end of the day, I, Shawanda was involved. Like, um, and, and I so... called Shawanda, well, Miss Rutledge, I called Miss Rutledge to come over so we could talk with the CPS worker to try to find out what we were gonna do as far as Sanaya's concerned. And gave Mr. Rutledge the opportunity to take a DNA test in our hometown. Now, he questions the character of Ms. Brown raising the child, saying she's unfit to be a mom. But wasn't he the one that got her pregnant? I mean, talk about him having kids with five different women. That's hypocritical, man. Like, I, I would be happy if she is mine, but at the same time, I would be sad because the mother that she has, the mother that she has to grow up with. You understand what I'm saying? Because she been through a lot. I just don't understand, though, because when you lay down with somebody with no protection right. on more than one occasion, right. are you allowed to get up later and talk about their character? Right. <laughs> After you potentially made a child with them? I mean, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. You have a choice. So let's get to the result because, um... <laughs> I think that's the only way we're gonna be able to move forward, is to have the results. Now that that's out of the way, let's check out them results and find out who's fated to be the mommy and daddy. When it comes to one-year-old Sanaya Rutledge Brown, Mr. Rutledge, it has been determined by this court that you are her father. What? Now what? What y'all gotta say now? What do y'all gotta say now? Exactly. Exactly. I thought that's what y'all had to say. I apologize. Both parents want to seek paternity of the baby they had last. Now, Mr. Barlow's in bewilderment that the kid doesn't look like him and claims that his wife might have had an affair with a landlord. Exactly like you, but the defendant's son, Jabril, looks nothing like you. And that's because you're not his father. And you know who is. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Winslow, you stand in court stating that Mr. Barlow is your son's biological father, but also say if he's not, there's a good reason for it. That's correct, Your Honor. So, Mr. Barlow, tell us why you doubt Jabril and who you believe his real father is. Because I, I got a long past of infidelity. I got a long history of infidelity. A very and long so, history. And so I left. When I went away, she said pay back some okay, straight Okay, let's, let's use honor, the court That's first exactly of all, what she I said. Never... Miss Winslow's pretty sure the baby is his. Now, he believes that it was a landlord because he's always around when he was away. Now, was he jealous that his wife just had good relations with the man? Mr. Barlow, your point was he may have been interested in her or something because instead of the $2,500 that was... Who gonna take 300 He just took $300. Someone who felt sorry for a okay, single mother. Now, check this mother. out. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I, I'm taking $300 <laughs> from you out of 25. 
I'm a businessman now, but yet you didn't just give me the other 2200 but I'm buying you furniture. I'm Already the, times. Yeah, I know. You he, called and she basically just hung up. Yeah, on hang up on me. Then when I came home one time, he I pop up. To hold I pop up. Now he drives his wife to an unstable state of mind, making her question the paternity of her own baby. Talk about shameless. Uh, you're this child's mother. Yes. I and this do. is really upsetting you. You're, you're serious. Yes, I'm serious because every day when I go somewhere, whether it's the grocery store, where there is, wherever we go, the doctor, we went to a place for my kids that don't have been switched at the hospital and find out later on that, that their parents aren't their biological children. Let me be clear. You pulled up research, and this is research that talks about the fact that there are about 28,000 babies that get switched at birth, at birth in the hospital. In the hospital. Every year. Every now, year. sometimes that's temporary, but sometimes permanently. Sometimes permanently. I just want to And know. you have so much doubt. Now, he claims that he doesn't trust her, but also had kids behind her back. Now, cheaters always think that their partners are always doing the same. Of course, why wouldn't they? I mean, talk about insecurity setting in. I mean, the dude even went ahead to sign the birth certificate when he had doubts. So it's not like it's just like a little simple thing like he hasn't done anything to me. He has done the most. And I still love him to death with the, to the bottom of my heart. Calls you his daddy. Yeah, he say dada. And he can say that papa. He say padre. He, no, know, he, he doesn't. He can say a lot of Spanish stuff. He does stuff. not. <laughs> you know That's saying? him being funny. He, he, he does he not speak Spanish. Spanish stuff. He does not. You know what I mean? Like, you saying the child speaks Spanish no, too? No, <laughs> yeah. All right, it's time to find out if Ms. Winslow's been sincere all this time or not. Let's check out him results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Barlow, you are the father. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, the bottom line is you are the mother and you are the father. Watch as paternity court reveals the unparalleled drama that left Judge Lauren Legg lost for words in cases where a man doesn't believe that he fathered his girlfriend's son because at the time he conceived, she was in a relationship with another man. These are the cases that made Judge Lauren Legg speechless. Paul, you admit you have no idea father's son. Yes, ma'am. You acknowledge you slept with another man, but say that was only because you were confused and didn't know who you wanted to be with at the time. Yes, ma'am. A man believes he's not the biological father of a 10-month-old boy since the kid was named after another man whom his girlfriend admits to dating at the same time. It came to me one day after they split up and we started talking. And that's how it started from there. And the doubts about Noah is that when we started talking, we started to get together and we wanted the relationship. Well, after we'd get into an argument and fight, he'd go back to his house every Only time. Only because you would make me go back to his house. No, no, wouldn't make you go back anywhere. Make you go back. So you felt like you were in a relationship with her, but start an argument and then fight and then make the fight so big, she'd have reason yeah, to walk out and go back to her house. Yeah, because I'd tell her to go ahead and go go on. I didn't want to deal with the situation. I might so have said it with Tom, but I was mad. And so, Miss Hall, did you go back to your ex? I sure did. If he truly wasn't giving her what she wanted in a relationship, why not break it off and save everybody the heartbreak? According to her, it's hard when you love somebody. When she had a baby, he wasn't aware because he wasn't even allowed to come up there to see even if he wanted to be there. I wanted to be at the hospital when he was born. I you wasn't allowed. You weren't allowed to come I'm up I'm sorry. There? If he could find a ride himself, Your Honor, he could have came up there. That's his fault. No. Uh, my ex and me. And at that time, we're at the hospital. Had you made your ex believe this was his son? Yes, Your Honor, I did. He gave me the comfort, the love, or the financial stability that I needed for me and my kids. And so at what point did you then decide that Noah was Mac? Yes. Yes, ma'am, I even have a calendar showing the conception date and when Noah was born and why I was confused. Jerome, can you get that for me, please? Sure. All right. See, Your Honor, you can also see why I'm confused with my story. He made it clear that he really loves her and would also want to be able to trust her. Now, her other kids look at him like a dad, and he wants the child to be in their lives, and for all that to happen, the arguing's got to stop. You've got to know this is just not the way to do it. No, but it's hard when you love somebody and you know one gives you the love, the sex. You are not the first woman that has loved different qualities about two different men. And I'm sure the same has happened for men as it relates to women. The issue is, Ms. Hall, is when you begin to bring children into the world. Children! It's not just you riding the seesaw anymore. They're on. It's not an excuse. No, 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 no. It's an excuse. What? And I'll tell you why you keep being able to make that. It's because Mr. Elliot left you and your ex 
less. Both of these men allow you to go back and forth and back and forth, and you've become comfortable in this statement that I'm confused, and it's an excuse. Then maybe both of them should leave me. Well, look, you said it, not me. Now, the real question is, why does he keep hanging in there knowing fully well that she goes back to another man? And even worse, is pregnant with yet another child that he doesn't know whether it's his or the other man's. I love it. When we're together, everything is just always good when we're out and about doing our stuff. And when we're the arguments, then that's where we start to argue and fight and it's bad. You know, the trust issue. I mean, I really do love her. I just want to be with her. What do you feel? I wish I think it's part me too. Just part? Well, a lot of part me, so. So you're saying that no matter what, you really want him to be Noah's father? Yes. I do, Your Honor. And yet, there is a real possibility that he's your ex's child. Yes. And there may be a real possibility that the baby you're potentially carrying right now could be your ex child as well. Yes, Your Honor. But you really want to be with Mr. Elliot. He wants to be around him when it's good for him, but when it's good for me, he don't want to part with no. Say Explain. Okay, uh, when I was with him last time, he told me I could either make my son shut up or he would. They got a weird relationship. Two months after the kid was born was when he saw him and it was at a friend's place because she came by with him. Now she claimed that he could have seen the kid but he chose not to. Well you can't tell a guy another man's the father of the baby they believe is supposed to be theirs and expect them to make an effort. Mr. Elliot, you are not Noah's no. father. A woman believes the defendant has always been unfaithful to her. She also believes that he still holds a flame for his ex-wife. Now she claims that he's always accused her of cheating and has repeatedly denied father and her daughter. Did your relationship with Mr. Phillips go so wrong? Well, the way we got together, we got together um, having sex. And so when you build a relationship like That's that. That's pretty together. Yeah. <laughs> and when so you... it started off as a non-committal sexual relationship. Correct. Okay. And a, a now she was pregnant, she told him. Now she claims that she understands his concerns and how he feels about her and co-workers because they stayed in the same apartment, they worked together, and they also took- Wait a minute. What? She used to be on the phone. We was living a single lifestyle and we was just sexual apart. So when her dude used to call her, she still answered the phone to keep him comfortable, to keep him secure. Um, Miss Wilson, were you talking on the phone? Uh, yeah. I was on the phone with a man, not my man. And he's done the same thing when I was having sex with him also. I don't now, at some point, she made the decision to be committed. She was supposed to move in back with her mom, but when her mom knew of his lifestyle, she didn't want her to have anything to do with him at all. Now, when she found out that she still had something to do with him, she kicked her ass out. We're living the only way to end this and clear everybody's doubt is to check out the results and find out who really is the daddy of that baby. When it comes to baby Hope Phillips and whether Mr. Phillips or Mr. Garcia is her father, Mr. Lies of betrayal bring two cousins to court after one had sex with the other's girlfriend. Now the DNA question has torn their families apart and each man hopes to prove that he fathered her 10 month old son. She's one of the identical twins. And Miss McCartney sent this statement. Cordell's the dad. He's been dad since day one and I've been grandma since day one. I'll continue to be grandma either way. So your mother's developed a significant bond with Arrow as well. Yes, Your Honor. And she believes she's the grandmother. Yes, Your Honor. And raises and treats the baby like, I said, okay, who's the dad? And she refused. It's making me crazy. It's really messed up me and my sister's relationship so, Miss Endicott, you are Mr. Eddie. And Cordell's. And Cordell's on. Yeah. What do you know about this man? I do know that she tells Nathan all the time, you're the daddy. That she'll go back to Cordell and say, you're the daddy. I just want it done and over with. And if it's Nathan, I mean, if it's Nathan, that's cool. He needs to be a daddy being alive. And if it's Cordell, she needs to leave Nathan alone so he can go on. Now, he claimed he wasn't at the child's birth because he was told she had a doctor's appointment that day and he told her to keep him updated. Now, she went under an emergency C-section and he had no means of transportation. Was that because he was with you or because you all made a decision? Did, was it a three-way consultation? No, Your Honor. Um, he was there at the birth and I felt like Nathan wasn't even ready if it was his own son because he didn't have a job. He didn't have a vehicle. He still lived with parent and somebody. Um, he never had his own place and... So you picking the best father. You're not picking the biological father. You picking the best father. The opportunity to be there because he had transportation 
and he had no. We would have went through with a DNA. If somebody told me that I had a son and he's being born, I don't care if I had to hitchhike, I would be at the hospital the day after. So you day, felt like I... because he didn't get there, he wasn't as committed, which only reaffirmed the reason why you decided Mr. Nicola is gonna be the best father for the baby. I'm putting his name on the birth certificate. And I believed he was. I still. Mr. Eddie confirmed that he was aware that his cousin signed a birth certificate and the fact that he missed the moments of the baby being born ripped his heart out because he thought that she loved him more than enough to know that she shouldn't have pushed him aside for his cousin to be the dad. I mean, if it comes back real, I mean, I'll, I'll just let him be. I just got, that's your brother, but you the big brother. Yes, Sean. He idolizes his big brother. His big brother had a girl. The girl was beautiful. I idolized my big brother, but the girl then pays me attention when my big brother does things she doesn't like. Now, I fall in love with my, my, my big brother's girl. And now, she's keeping my baby away from me because now, she really wants to be with my big brother, so they've taken my baby and made a family. But I still love my big brother, but I still love the girl. Yeah, sure. Miss Wilson, I, I need to ask you this because I, I feel like that there were parts of these times and these moments where you latched on to him and made him feel like you loved him and there was potential for you all. You're nodding yes. Honestly, man, that's just understandable. Like, it's obvious that they got a good relationship. I mean, neither of them has spoken a no word about each other and they both cried while talking about the baby. The biological father is Mr. Nicola. Myself, so I didn't even know what she was going through. But when you're out here, sometimes you have to give up on yourself to do it for your children. It's a fact that being a parent ain't easy, but the bare minimum for a parent is to be there emotionally for their kids. Now, unfortunately, not many of these parents reach this standard. Watch this young woman break down crying as she confronts her mom for never taking the time to confirm her paternity before she became an adult. These are the most cruel cases on paternity court. Now, there's a lot at stake for this young woman who's been skeptical about her paternity. Now she lunged forward to discover the truth, bringing her mom and her father to court. You're here today suing your mother for $2,200 for emotional distress. You say she's caused you by not knowing who your biological father is. Yes, now, the mom. court has located one possible father and must determine if there is enough evidence to order a paternity test. Ms. Brown Overstreet, you admit to making mistakes as a mother, but claim you shouldn't be held accountable in court for your daughter's pain. Yes, Your Honor. You hope there's enough evidence presented today to prove that the man in court today is your daughter's biological father. Father. Yes, Your Honor. The man Clifton Smith, who's in our court today, has not been tested yet. No, Your Honor. I never knew who could be my father. I didn't know who he could be. I didn't know who he was. I was in and out of foster care on three different occasions. Um, foster care wasn't so good, you know. I had four brothers and a sister. I didn't know where they were. They got split up, too. My grandmother got us back. She got sick. I missed three months of school. Got kicked out. I was in alternative school. I got kicked out because my grandma got sick and I had to take care of her. Well, that's an unconventional way of making someone aware of something, especially a kid. Now, she single-handedly almost ruined his relationship over a matter that should have been resolved 20 years ago. Ms. Brown Overstreet, how does it feel to hear your daughter speak with such pain in her heart? I mean, it's difficult to even say to another mother that your daughter blames you. I feel like my daughter hates me because of the fact that I wasn't always there and I didn't have a handbook on how to be a parent. I had my kids young and it was six, I have six of them. So it wasn't like it was just one child. I had a hard time trying to be a mother. I didn't know how to raise my kids and when I lost custody of them, I tried my best to get them back and I kind of gave up on myself. I can admit that I was young and I was wild and I was kind of promiscuous, so I did not know who her father was. Did you approach any of those men and say, I'm pregnant, I think you're the father, or you just left them all alone? I just left them all alone. So, Miss Brown, please tell the court, what was life like without a father, growing up without a father in your life? Your Honor, it was hard. I mean, I can barely sit up and describe how hard my life has been. Not only without a father, without my mom. Now, we may not believe the mother or the father, but the kid's gonna have the best memories of these important moments. Now, the ugly part about all of this is the defendant's broken sense of accountability and morality. I had 
gave up on myself, so I didn't even know what she was going through. Well, when you have kids, sometimes you have to give up on yourself to do for your children. I understand that. I'm sorry. Did you hear your mother say she was sorry? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe that she is? Somewhat I do. Man, the poor girl's been through the whole foster care system, and her mom's here bragging about what a good job she done. Like, okay, Sheila. That woman needs to get a reality check and cash it, man. Now, her daughter's living through confusion. So I asked my mom when I get off work, I say, it's this guy that came up to my job, Mr. Smith. I told her his name. She said, oh, oh yeah, that might be, that, that, it's a possibility that he's your dad. Now, I'm 18 now, I'm grown. Why are you just now telling me that it's a possibility that he could be my father? So were you angry with your mother that she hadn't ever mentioned Mr. Smith's name? Or were you angry with Mr. Smith? If I have a child out there, I want to know. So when I pulled up, I get out the car and my cousin pointed her out. So I was looking at her. And so she came up and I said something to her first. And she was smiling at me like I'm like, like, like I was trying to flirt with her or something. So I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, hold up here. I might be your father. You busy trying to flirt with me. Right. You know, cut it out right there. And you are hopeful. I'm, you truly are hopeful. I love her already. Aww. Even if we get the results, her mom ain't never gonna change her ways, man. But with all the finger pointing and the blaming everybody but herself. You've reviewed the evidence in this case. Yes. Mr. Smith contends that he had a serious injury and the doctor told him he may not be able to have children because of this. We are trying to determine whether it's even appropriate to order a DNA test. Can you shed light on the likelihood and the injury? I believe I can. It's absolutely pos possible, in my opinion, for Mr. Smith uh, or someone with a testicular injury such as him to father a child. Nature often gives us two of what's important. And here's why. On average, a man releases anywhere between 50 million and a billion sperm at a time. So if one testicle isn't functioning, you can cut that number in half to say 25 million. Fertility doesn't become an issue until that number drops below 10 million. So based on the numbers, it's definitely possible for someone with a testicular injury to still father a child as long as the swimmers are normal and healthy. This has clearly been going on for far too long and she deserves to know the truth are not Chantia's father. I'm sorry. Ms. Brown, you okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. How about you, Mr. Smith? I know you had hopes. Yeah. So I still love her. It's cool. So you still my baby, right? You know I love you. After sustaining a severe groin injury while trying to fold a futon, a man comes to court unsure if it's possible for him to be the father of a 22. Kind of crazy, man. But what's crazier is that she'd grown up without parental support at all. Oh, I don't have They did get it done. Should have got it done when he came back into my life when I was 10. And that's a pretty interesting confirmation from both the mother and the potential father, and somehow both discredited him as a dad. I gotta go through this. Y'all hurt my feelings, for real, mom. Well, I apologize. Now, life, it, it comes with up and downs, and it comes with hurt. Um, as far as I'm concerned, a great job or a good job as best as I could I for my ability. I understand, mom, but, but when you say you I, gotta play the mom and do my I job love her. and try to make sure her, and that you don't first, miss out first on other baby. stuff. Okay, the, the, let, me, let me say this. Now, the tests were done, and it's time to check the results and give this young woman some closure. As it pertains to Miss... Chanel Craig, Miss Craig, Mr. Thompson is not your father. The lady comes up to confront the man that she knows as her dad after he disappeared on her 20 years ago. Miss Jackson. Yes, Your Honor. You say you've always known Mr. Hightower is your father. Mr. Hightower? Yes, ma'am. Did you have a relationship with Miss Jackson's mother? Yes, I did. Tell the court about the nature of your relationship. Me and her mother uh, had a relation and we was intimate for like about six months, uh, about 35, 40 times. Um, after that, kind of broke off after that. Okay. That I'm not the father. We did, um, you know, I asked her a couple of times if we could have a paternity test and that didn't fall through. And so there's been a question of paternity in your mind from the beginning. Yes, ma'am. So much so that you even requested a DNA test. Yes, ma'am. But unfortunately, it was never administered. No. That makes sense. He offered a paternity test and she took it as a challenge to her integrity and chose to reject the offer and that was enough for him to say adios and never look back. She told me that I was the father. She did? Yes, sir. Can I say something? Yes, you may, Miss Jack. Um, actually, he was going to the doctor's appointment to my mom, too. You were? Yeah. Never happened. 
I, yeah, I don't know why her mom would tell her that. I don't think she lied to me. I never, ever. Um, she told me that him and her, they weren't really in an actual relationship, but they did mess around quite a lot, and that um, he couldn't um, tell everybody else that him and her was in relations or messing around. But at the end of the day, she knew definitively that he was your biological father. Correct. Mr. Hightower. I thought, you know, well, maybe it's a possibility. So at that time, I went and picked her up me and uh, Miss Hightower picked her up. Then we took her to the mall, went to the mall. So at that point, I just left it like that. I don't remember him picking me up and taking me to the mall. I remember my mom taking me to the mall, and I do remember her. The lady. He claims that he doesn't recall, which honestly just sounds like a lie, because what kids remember the most is the hurt. And they never forget the pain, and it's got to have been pretty painful for her to remember it to the day. Children remember those things, and I see that that... What are you feeling, Brittany? <laughs> I'm mad because I shouldn't even have to go through all this, you know? It shouldn't have been 20 years later that you decided to come and find me. If you believe that I was your daughter, then you would have put in the effort to get the DNA test to find out and not miss parts of my life. And what was it like growing up without you? I mean, um, I, I was always honor, loved, you know? Your Honor, I tried several occasions to go and get the DNA test, but her mother never followed through with the DNA. So I have a total of 14 kids, and all my kids, all my kids know each other. So there would be no reason for me not to do the same with her. Now, I understand his standpoint, and he tried to rectify himself by asking her for DNA before they can move forward. And what else did you feel, Brittany? Like a sense of relief, because I finally got to talk to him, and I haven't, you know, talked to him or seen him ever since I was younger. This man that everyone has said is your biological father, and you've been confused about where he is, why he wasn't in your life. What would you like to say to him right now? I've always lived in Sacramento. I never went anywhere else. Why didn't you try harder? That's a question, Mr. Hightower. Dude, uh, like I said, I was going through things in my life that I needed to take care of me before I can take care of uh, another child. I feel that her mom would have put forth that effort in the beginning to go through with the DNA, especially when I'm telling her that I'll pay for the DNA test. There ain't no doubt that it started, except for the fact that her mom was involved with a bunch of other dudes. When it comes to 24-year-old Brittany Jackson, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Hightower, you are not the father. He's unfortunately not your biological father after all. Can I give her a hug? No, thank you. Oh. You're just not ready, but that was, yes. that was lovely. This is very difficult. I thank you for attempting to support this beautiful young woman. And it's not over. It's not completely behind her yet, but we at least have gotten to one step in the truth. And I let him stomp on me and do it all. And I still just take the punches and still love him. Yeah. If I had their pictures right here, I could probably make so, it rain with the possibilities. He told okay. me that he was basically this big, rich person from Hollywood. I never said that. That he had a big Hollywood. house on... Oh, boy, oh, boy. Hold on to your pants, ladies and gents. This one's a rough one. Why, you ask? Because a woman had revenge sex to get back at her cheating husband, and he won't accept her daughter until a DNA test proves that he's the dad. She stated that she was fooled by his lies and empty promises, and all she wanted from him was to take up his responsibilities. In the beginning, you know, everything was cool, she was nice, but then to come to find out she's very conniving, bossy, insecure, all of the above. So you say you feel like a fool? So they met through a friend who introduced them at a club that they both went to, which is always how every great relationship story starts, am I right? And somehow they got married. She admitted she cheated because he cheated on her first. Because, hey, look, if we follow the principle of an eye for an eye, everybody in the world would be blind. Just saying. Yeah, anyway. On his birthday, there was a party, but he didn't invite her because he wanted to enjoy it himself. That's kind of cold, bro. Okay. She also had another party she planned on going to regardless of his birthday, so she can't really complain. I called her phone and he answered her you phone and said, I'm chilling with my baby. What? Exactly That's what a he lie. Said. Judge, how he found out is when we came home that Sunday, I told him, when we got into it, I can't remember what the argument was about. I said, okay, that's why I had an affair with. Okay, his doubts are valid. She shouldn't have said that to him. 
I'm not sure what she was trying to insinuate, but she told the court that she slept with the other guy with protection, but didn't with Mr. Pebbles. When I was seven, I had a dog named Mr. Pebbles. I wonder if they're related. Anyway, moving on. So that wasn't the only time she slept with the other guy. It apparently happened again one week after that. So when you find out you're pregnant, who do you tell? Of course, my husband, Mr. Peebles. So you tell him. And when you find this out, Mr. Peebles, what is your reaction? My, my reaction was, you know, I'm super excited. This is this gonna be my first child. You know? Like every season finale of The Flash ever, the timelines just weren't adding up for him, so he got to thinking. They'd been together for two years, sleeping unprotected, and she never got pregnant. But she goes outside the relationship, comes back, and now she's got a bun in the oven. Something is definitely wrong somewhere. It appears that there was more than one guy she was sleeping with, according to Mr. Pebbles. You're married to Mr. Peebles, but you had another man paying your bills and taking care of you? Hi, Multiple. How, how else was he getting taken care of? Multiple. Oh! I wasn't going to keep on using my money. Oh, hey, look at that. Mr. Pebbles isn't innocent either. Who thought? This guy's got a baby due two weeks before he and Miss Pebbles' child, and he still talks to the woman in question. She never sees him, and when she calls his phone, she's on the block list. He told the court that she put trackers on his phone and then cut the phone off. Well, she's paying for it now because he used to have a job, but then he quit. And now she takes care of everything, including him. Real winner, right? Yeah, you taking care of me. How? You still around? You get money from me? I take care of myself. How are you doing with no so, job? Mr. Peebles, did you get another woman pregnant? Yeah, I, I actually did. At the did, same you time as your wife? I actually, we went our separate ways. Legally, they were still together. He'd moved in with his best friend, then ended up meeting the other woman. They got intimate, started spending nights together, and then they moved in. All of this was happening while he and Mrs. Pebbles were still married. But holy cow, it just keeps on getting worse. Miss Pebbles seems to be pregnant with another child, and she doesn't even know who the daddy is. Like there's any resemblance? I don't know how to, to really look into and see if she looked like me or any of that, the features and all that. I can't see none of that. I don't even look at it like that. I can't, I really don't. The other guy she slept with knew she was pregnant, but when he looked at the child, he immediately said the child wasn't his. She doesn't want to lose her family, but with the other baby involved, things might not work out, you think? If the child turns out to be his, he told the court that he then might be interested in making the marriage of family work. They're basically just going in a vicious cycle at this point, so let's check out the results. Case of Peebles versus Peebles. When it comes to 20-month-old, Amira has been determined by this court. Mr. Peebles, you are the father. <laughs> At this point, the foundation of their marriage is pretty much destroyed, so it's up to them to decide whether they want to fix it or watch it crumble away. On to our next case. It's time for another episode of Wheel of the Ho. All right, so grab your popcorn because this one is gonna be a ride. A woman needs a paternity test, okay, to determine if her murdered brother, all right, fathered three babies by three different women. Woo In October 2011, uh, my father called me with a very devastating phone call. He told me that my older brother, Quadravius, had been shot. On my way to the hospital, I got a phone call from my younger sister, and she told me that... Throughout the years, these women have been popping up, claiming that her brother fathered their kids. Starting with Miss Robs, she'd met the deceased six years ago on the train, they stayed together, but he was constantly cheating on her. She got tired like they do and went to spend the night at her ex's, and she cheated with him. She found out she was pregnant, and she told her ex that it was his because the deceased was incarcerated. Yikes! And she named her after the ex, so... So, how are we so you're not sure if her daughter is your brother's child at all? No, ma'am. And is this true, Ms. Robs? You named the baby after the ex. Miss Webb revealed that she was dating the deceased when he passed away. 
They were neighbors when they met, and he'd come over to her house, and he'd spend the night and also play with her kids. One of her children's fathers was coming by to see his son. She asked the deceased to stay, but he said he was going home. He went home, but he was on the street with binoculars. Now, that's either really sweet or really creepy. I ended up pregnant once I moved in with GQ, but that's what they thought I slept with my baby daddy, so, you know. That's where the doubt came from. Yeah. yeah. That's where, it was a rumor um, in toss-up. So in the streets, the rumor was she slept with her she baby daddy. She slept with him. Miss Gibson, or as we're going to refer to her now, uh, number three of three, stated that she just found out about Miss Rose's daughter three weeks ago because GQ never told them anything about her. Miss Rose told the court that she was in a relationship with someone else besides GQ during the time of conception. They weren't supposed to be intimate, but it happened anyway. The boyfriend had contacted Miss Gibson on Facebook. And he had no idea that there was a different po a possibility of him not being the father. So that got me feeling some type of way. So I started doing my own little research and digging on my own. Uh huh. And I found out that um, there could be not one, not two, not three, but four different other baby daddies. It appears that Mrs. Rose's daughter is the only one she questions most in her heart. Let's clear the air and find out if the deceased really fathered these kids. It's time for the results. Is Robs, when it comes to two-year-old Brianna, it has been determined that Mr. Gibson is her father. <laughs> It's sad knowing that her child doesn't have a father, so let's check out the results relating to Miss Webb. It has been determined that Mr. Gibson is her father. <laughs> well, this has been going well so far. Let's check out the final result relating to Miss Rose. One year old Zalela. It has been determined that Mr. Gibson is her father. <gasps> I gotta go get her. That went better than I expected. I do feel sorry for them, but it's always gonna hurt and you just gotta find a way to live with it. Onward to the next case. Okay, hold on tight because this next one sounds like it should be a title of an Iron Maiden album. All right, so we got a man returning to paternity court to find out if he's the biological father of an eighth child by a fifth woman. Miss Smith admitted she cheated on him, but she believes it was before she got pregnant. Well, I met her on the website. You know, I was looking for love, and um, I went to a website, and um, I ran into, ran into Crystal. You know, four or five months into it, you're getting suspicious about certain things. You know, she gave me her voicemail and I hear- She stated that she'd given him her password because she wasn't doing anything. She also mentioned that he also had girls leaving him voicemails and calling him. According to Mr. Scott, she wasn't supposed to give voicemails like that if she had a man. Not justifying what she did, but why is it okay for him to get voicemails, but not for her? That's kind of a really bad double standard. He honest with you about how many children he had? No, he was not. Yes, I was. I don't no, lie about my not. kids. I only thought so that he had five. you didn't know that Mr. Scott had two three-year-olds, two six-year-olds, no, I didn't. A seven-year-old, a twelve-year-old, and a thirteen-year-old. So they were talking online for about eight months. They made arrangements to meet, and they also made a mutual agreement that they were each going to pay for half of it. She stated that she'd paid for his whole trip to come and see her the first time, but he disagreed, saying he'd paid for his own ticket to get there, although she paid for him to come back. So, Ms. Kalan, you find out you're pregnant. Uh-huh. And then what? Um, he was uh, happy. He said, was, yeah, uh, quote, I, unquote, oh, mommy, we're going to be a family. Your Honor, when he came so, to Michigan, he was calling me mommy. That's what we agreed and on. That's what I mean. His, I mean, his that was an agree. When he got to Michigan, she didn't greet him at all. She took him to her family, and everybody greeted him with love. They went to where she worked. They all got talking, but there was a particular guy that didn't say a word or even look at him. When they were back to the room, this guy sent her a text, and she deleted it. That's a pretty suspicious. First cousin, look, I promise you, I'm not going to leave you. Just tell me what happened. She told me I had sex with him, but it didn't last that long. That's what she said. And then she told me she asked, I had sex with him once. She admitted cheating on him once, but it only takes one time. He then asked her for the guy's number. She hesitated for a while, but he eventually got it. 
So he called him and asked him if he'd slept with his girl. He said he did, but never meant for it to happen. That was the same thing she said. Could she have coached him into saying that? Who knows? The day I cheated with him, he pretty much disappeared on me. I didn't, I didn't talk I to him for a long. I came back in October. Pregnancy. I came back in October, and that's when I started talking to other women, and she knew about it. Okay, so at some point you discovered you're pregnant. And you let Mr. So she revealed that she had an IUD in, but she'd removed it intentionally to get pregnant because they planned the baby. Oh boy. So why then did he now deny the baby and disappear? Why start something you can't finish? He denied disappearing, but she stated that she made a post on Facebook about finding out she was having a baby. Apparently, he deactivated his entire Facebook two seconds later. Once I told him I was pregnant, we fought for about another month afterwards, and then he changed his phone number on me, his Facebook, everything. He changed everything on me. I didn't I talk to Marcel until I was like I have the same eight or nine months. I had sent you pictures because you I told never received me to. Them. He denied receiving the pictures. It appears that his girlfriend had told her his mom once told him he had a letter, which was the baby's ultrasound, but he asked her to throw it away. Miss Smith's witness, Miss Linsky, said he was a deadbeat. She explained that she had offered for them to stay at her house until they were in Michigan so they didn't have to spend any money. Oh, I got this, I'll pay for the hotel. Well, it turns around, Crystal paid for the hotel. He would not let Crystal leave the hotel. We had family cookouts so that he could get to know the family. And oh no, he didn't wanna go, he wanted to stay in the hotel. It's pretty clear she paid for everything. She also brought receipts outlining what she paid. She has a receipt for a round trip bus ticket from Palmdale, California to Flint, Michigan, which was $498. There's also hotel expenses for $461 and a one-way return flight from Detroit, Michigan to Burbank, California for $131 and a hotel for $410. That's a total of about 1500 bucks. Well, if I knew all this was going to come down, then I would have prepared myself a little more. You should have prepared yourself. But you it don't even matter, because I don't even need Mr. no documents. Scott, you're I don't in need court. Documents. This is your third time. You're Who comes to court to prove they're right without receipts? I mean, for somebody that's been to court three times for the same reason, he should have come prepared. They both affirmed that they had a mutual agreement that they were going to pay for half of the expenses, but there's really no evidence that he contributed to anything. Judge Lauren ruled for the defendant on the counterclaim in the amount of $684.50 that he owes her. Try well, I want to counter no, for no. all my pain Mr. and suffering. Mr. Scott, stop talking. Crazy. You're not going to talk your way out of this. You <laughs> talked your way into the debt. You're not wow. going to talk your way out of owing it. Wow. If he knew he wasn't going to be able to deal with all of this, why not stick to the four women he's already got? If not greed, I don't even know what to call this. Just craziness? Absolute insanity? I don't know. Anyway, it's time for the results. Ace of Scott versus Smith. As it pertains to three-month-old... Honesty Smith. Mr. Scott, you are her father. Told you. Couldn't keep their legs closed. Take care of your baby. Aren't you multitasking? No, I was not. <laughs> you probably were most test. Bad person, go get child support. When we went to child for child support, I would have got a DNA test. And this was a detector test. To you took a lie to detector test? To show you that I'm not lying and that I'm telling the truth. Oh, this one's gonna be fun. Okay, a woman's in court with her parents to prove that the man she knows as her dad is her biological father. The father, on the other hand, is, according to him, 1,000% sure that he did not father this child. So let's get into it. Yeah. You say you've always known the defendant was your father and his denial has crushed you. Once you prove that he is your dad, you hope he will finally accept you. According to Ms. La Angela and her mother, Mr. Rollins never for once acknowledged that she was his daughter and it's been really hurtful for her because her mom has always told her that she was his daughter so she was rejected by the man she knows to be her dad i wonder why he firmly believes that she's not his daughter though i get the feeling there's a little bit of dirt here so let's start digging you know it affected me real bad like i feel like that he wasn't 
responsible to even say I'm his daughter or not. And so for 24 years, you've had to deal with this. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, that's a conversation. I bet that must have been really hard for Miss LaAngela because she wouldn't think that her mother would lie to her about something like that. All she wanted to do was to have a conversation with her dad, but he didn't accept her. Pretty sure he's got his reasons, though. Uh, Doobie here and they was like, he came out, he was like, well, this mean? So I asked him, I was like, well, are you my father? He was like, he was like, well, no, I'm not your father. Okay, that's just wrong. Even if he is sure that he's not her father, he doesn't have to be a prick about it or talk to her like that. Like, where's your sense of empathy, my dude? How would you feel in that situation? I never switched the story. Okay. Are you a DNA tester? You don't... No, what you not... No, you're not gonna prosecute her because you don't have no law degree. Like you're, you're not a prosecutor. <laughs> I like this guy. He believes that Miss LaAngela's mother was with other men, you know, sexually during the time they were together. Uh, the way he said it, though, is pretty funny. Check it out. The thing I can do is verbally tell you... Verbally state that it. She was... Had multiple parts. She was multitasking. No, I was not. <laughs> You probably were most outtasted. I know I would. You're saying in a polite way she was having sex with more than one man. The mother denies being with multiple men at the same time. Like, you know, finger cuffs. She said she only had one boyfriend whom she'd broken up with days. Days, not weeks, not months, not years, but days, probably minutes, before she was sexually involved with Mr. Rollins. But who's really telling the truth between the two of them here? I had one boyfriend, and me and him had broke up when I had a two-night stand with Mr. Rollins over there, and that's the only one. And when it, when it came to his test, he was not the father, so I know he's the father. And okay. I'm 100% of So that. you've already had the other man tested? Yes. Well, I mean, if other episodes on Paternity Court are to be the judge, she's guilty. Okay, it's clear that Miss LaAngela has been really desperate for the truth for a really long time. She even went as far as asking Mr. Rollins to bring a home DNA test to her son's party so that they could both find out the truth. They later figured out, though, that they couldn't use it then. When it comes to my baby's first birthday, he was like, yeah. So he came, he brought a, a home DNA test. We didn't know how to use it, so... He brought a home DNA test to your baby's first birthday? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's because I was asked to bring it. Who asked you to bring it? According to Mr. Rollins, there are certain features that Miss LaAngela has that's similar to one of the men that her mother was, you know, borking at the time. He also added that he saw her when she was with another man and that after screwing the dude's brains out, the man would tell him how much he enjoyed it. Okay. Whew, that's a thing. Ain't no way I don't see that. When I come back, I thought two dogs back there fighting or something. <laughs> that was them rolling around in Bermuda grass. Oh, oh baby, you got me messed up. I don't think that was me. You probably been somebody you was with. <laughs> no, ma'am. Well, that's kind of a buzzkill, and it's super sad, but at least they all know now. And that hug that Mr. Rollins gave Miss LaAngela, it was also pretty wholesome. Now, by the way, what on earth is the mother talking about not sleeping with anybody else? She should know, just, just shut her mouth at this point in time. Like, sorry lady, <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. I never noticed that. Beautiful picture. Mm. <laughs> Are yeah. you saying you see a resemblance now? I mean, yeah, with, with, with the uh, makeup and everything on, I, I noticed that now. You see it. Uh, okay, so Mr. Rollins is starting to see a resemblance between Miss LaAngela and his late mother. Interesting. He genuinely tells the court that he did not notice the resemblance before. I mean, that makes sense. Guess he didn't think to check pictures of his mom for any similarities. Anyway, <laughs> it's time for those results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Rollins, you are not the father. <laughs> Miss Angela's mother needs to stop lying to her kid and really help her to figure out who the hell might be her actual father. She owes her at least that much. Moving on to the next case. Miss Allen's at court to prove that Mr. Childs is the biological daddy of her daughter, Miss Baylor. She believes that she got preggers after she had a brief affair with Mr. Childs. So let's take a look at this. Affair with Mr. Childs, you discovered you were pregnant with your daughter, Miss Baylor. You say Mr. Childs acknowledged paternity until his wife convinced him otherwise. <laughs> oh, gee. Mini Christmas that escalated quick. Miss Allen says that the reason why Mr. Childs is denying that Miss Baylor is his kid is because of his wife, or as she says, his pretty wife. Ooh, chiclet! Jealousy is a color that does not suit you well. 
All right, but why would Mr. Childs deny this just because of his wife? Doesn't he have a mind of his own? And why is Mr. Childs denying your daughter? Um, his his petty wife. Um, she been doing me. that for years. She wasn't there when we were sleeping together. I don't think she have anything to do with it. So you're basically blaming. Okay, so apparently Miss Allen and Mr. Childs met each other through mutual friends, and uh, she didn't stop till she ground his pelvis down into dust. You know what I'm saying? Cause uh, they got involved. Although Miss Allen said it was nothing serious, and they were just messing about. She was friends with cousins of mine, and. We got together like that. We end up messing around or whatever. You have mutual <laughs> friends. You start having sex. Well, obviously actually, unprotected. Actually it started like this. Okay, Miss Allen claims that when she found out that she was preggers, she told Mr. Childs that there was a possibility that he could be the father of the broodling growing in her tum tum, or that he might not be. She was kind of upfront about it though, so respect there. Miss Allen, what is your contention. I, I told him, I said, she may be your child. I told him, I said, it's a possibility that she may so not be So you said it is a possibility it, that she may not be yours. Exactly. This keeps getting more interesting, though. Miss Allen said that Mr. Child's wife, Miss Johnson, was always following her up and down and causing drama. Miss Johnson, however, disses her back. <laughs> You wouldn't believe what she got to say, too. I hope this turns into a cat fight. I got popcorn. Oh, uh, up and down the road, she following me. I can't she remember me chasing her up and down the street, but she can't remember who fathered her child. But she can't remember who fathered for her child. Furthermore, Your Honor, he's always girl, been there for girl, my please. children. Oh, well, damn. Apparently, Miss Baylor told Mr. Childs and his wife that Miss Allen had already gotten a DNA test done with another man before she decided to test Mr. Childs. Miss Allen agrees to having another man tested, but then says she wasn't messing with him. I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. If you weren't bouncing on that yoga ball, then why get a DNA test? Just saying. Hey, I think it's important to know, too. Well, when we met her daughter, the daughter told us that she had tested someone else. Why didn't you test him first? Testimony, which indicates that you also tested another man. Yes, yeah, she did. Is that, that true? Okay, that is. Okay, you know what? That That's just either, uh, either weird or just savagely creepy. A man just wouldn't approach your kid and tell her that he believes he's her father and would like to get a DNA test done if you haven't already been doing the dirty with him. I'd like to think that no man would do that. Yeah, a dude walking up to a woman with a baby being like, hey, you want another one? Disrespectful as all hell. That I could see. But this, that's a different story. Oh, and asked me, and he said, you know, I was messing with your mom around the time. I wanted, I wanted to get a DNA test with you. Okay, someone reached out to you, yes. Ms. Baylor, and said, I think I may be your father, and I want to have a test. Mr. Childs seems like a good father and a you know, kind of a good person generally. After all, he didn't deny her when she hit him up on Facebook and said, you might be my papa. I'm him on Facebook, hit him up, and I said, look, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I do actually want to know. And did, did I ever once deny you? Nah, you never did. Never once, never once. A child looking for a father, Yana, and I stand a chance of being- I can actually understand where he's coming from here. Apparently, he met Miss Baylor when she was nine, but she doesn't remember. He says Miss Allen should have approached him years ago, and this would have been taken care of. Well, he's not wrong there. In touch with Miss Baylor. And I told her that I wanted to meet Shy. 11 years ago, you would have been nine, Miss Baylor. Yes, ma'am. So you made an attempt yes, to meet Miss yes, Baylor at nine years old. Yes, ma'am. But you weren't informed. Mr. Childs is dropping some wisdom right here. And Miss Allen, unfortunately, she's spreading the doo doo. If the kid was really her priority, it wouldn't have mattered whether or not Mr. Childs was messing with other people. That's got nothing to do with the kid. All that stuff. So Again. that's why I just went on about my business. What does that have to do with the child at hand, y'all? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, exactly. but at the same time... That's what I'm saying if, if I've been we... going through, y'all. All right, my lovelies, time to find out what the results say. Are not the father. I'm very sorry, Miss Baylor. It's okay, Yana. You know, at the same time, 